Um, so I did uh, a project on crowdsourcing, um, uh, using crowdsourcing as an application for analyzing high data or high density data, high noise data. So specifically, um, United States Geological Survey high uh, resolution ortho imagery. So you know, um, planes fly by, take a picture of an image, and and we want to figure out what we can extract out of this image and and how we can extract it out as quickly as possible. So. Um, bye. Uh, yeah, crowdsourcing is the act of calling upon a pool of people to do a small task, and then you can pull all the information from all these small tasks to get something very large accomplished. In this case, processing very high data pictures. Other examples of this are like the Wikipedia, has all this information put on by its users and not audited by the users. Uh, up this open, open source club. Amazon Mechanical Turk is a system that's built for crowdsourcing for these things. You can post like samples of your essays and people will proofread them, like a penny each. You can get a whole paper of proofread for a dollar or something like that. Uh, yeah, other examples are Reddit, you know why do you know that? All the data or all the content on there is posted by users for it's karma, you not know, get anything from it. So yeah, Amazon Mechanical Turk, uh, you post these small tasks, as I said earlier. It can be anything from examining text to counting things, or just going to a website and like, reading something, putting counts onto that website. And you pay between like pennies to, I, I guess you can do up to dollars, I haven't really seen that happen. And this way you can get a ton of information in a couple days possibly. Two to three days you can get thousands of results. All right, so this is a project that I'm continuing uh, with a with a uh, alumni from RPI, Dr. Thomas Smith, um, and and this was kind of his his project where he wanted to figure out how we can use. Uh, crowdsourcing to do this cheaply compared to hiring a professional image analyst and paying them just a ton of money to get you know really really good data but you still have to wait around a long time and it costs a ton of money like I said so what I did is I took a big anal uh, big high uh, resolution image and I broke it down into small chips about 200 meters by 200 meters and then I asked um, the crowd through Mechanical Turk I asked them two questions I said I showed them building I showed them an image and I said how are there buildings in this image first of all and then once I parsed out all the tiles and I knew where there were buildings and where there were not, I then asked them, okay, how many buildings are in this image? You know, and I had a little input box and it's enter how many buildings or whatever. So um, each image for the first task for are there buildings in this image, I got seven results. And so if there was a majority of people said yes, then there were buildings in, in that tile. And if the majority of people said no, then there were not buildings in that tile. And then we farmed them out to the second task where I, I got 20, 20 um, discrete results for each tile, and then I was able to do just your standard statistical analysis, your average and your standard deviation, and find the, the range at which people were inputting these numbers at to get an accurate measurement as to how many buildings were in these images. Um, so the crowd was paid a cent for each one of these tasks, um, and which ran a total cost of running three experiments, which was uh, uh, there are 3,900 data points in, in my set. Uh, it cost me $33 and ran a total time of 24 hours. So that's a lot of data really quickly. Um, so the kind of basic statistics I, 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 I use to analyze this data, um, each user was graded upon uh, how well they performed across multiple tasks. So we can, we can establish a metric for how trustworthy our, each individual user is in the crowd. Um, we can also take a look at each individual image chip and then analyze where our responses came back and what range and how quickly we got these results back and, and which users particularly inputted which results. So that we can we can kinda of, we have two separate domains we can analyze and attack this image or this problem from. So um, my, my, my task then was to figure out how to remove these outliers that we're going to get in data sets like this and converge upon a correct answer. Um, and, and particularly how many results do we need, how many data points do we need in the set to converge upon an answer where we know that there will be 10 houses in this image. So um, 
I, over my uh, experiment, I found that the best and worst users usually did the least amount of work. So um, a user would log on and do look at two or three images and would either get them all right or all wrong and then leave and make three cents. And it'd take them two minutes, two, three minutes tops. Um, whereas the people who stick to, stuck around and did majority of them usually scored within 60 to 80 percent range. So um, they were they were getting a lot more wrong, but they were doing more. So there was a higher effectiveness of of those people, and we got you know better results because of it. There were also users that would come and just put in the random most you know type in whatever number they could and just hit enter and pay me my money. You know. So I get a cent to type in a thousand houses or whatever. So you got to make sure you can prune those results out of your data set. Otherwise, you're going to get a huge skew in your uh, expected results. So now what I'm doing back uh, with the Open Source Club is at the end of my research, there were two main questions that we had um, to ask. And that was, well, it has been shown that this is extremely cheap and it's extremely fast. So can we take a large area, and when I say large, I mean large, like the entire state of Utah or you know, California. Can we take a large area, mine it out all automatically and get all these results back? How quickly can we do that? How accurate is it going to be? Um, the other ta uh, question that we have is can we get any more data from the crowd um, without making these tasks too hard? Because the harder you make these tasks, the, the worse your results you get back. Um, so. Uh, what our um, task now, what we're doing now, I guess, then, is we're asking each user now, when they're counting the buildings, we're asking them to drop a pin down on each of the, on each of the buildings. So um, they, they don't lose count of how many houses there are in their head. Um, we have a physical location of each of the houses. We also have an absolute location, or a, or a referential location, you know, compared to other houses. So when we go back through and do our analysis, we can do kind of like a cluster analysis so that we know that you know within a certain probability there exists a house over this cluster of pins and we can check densities and and figure out you know population regions and stuff like that so and then the other thing i want to do is um, taking with the scaling with this big area i want to be able to take a big area and ask the crowd are there more than twenty images yes or no and so if they answer yes then what i want to do is i want to dynamically scale that image and cut it, cut it up and then farm out each of the tiles separately. So now that I'm asking, okay, are there 20 images in this? So it's kind of a recursive call through the image to tile through the image so that we can get the results. Um, and we don't have to keep track of more than 20 pins per image, which could get out of control. So um, I guess that's it for now. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. Um, so I guess over the summer I was working at a satellite company that's doing pretty much the same thing um, with their images, counting things and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, but I guess um, what, what they were running into was, um, it, I mean, it, it is useful to have people counting these things, but, you know, how practical is that? You know, it would be a lot more useful to have a computer algorithm that does that. So are you guys working on any kind of like learning algorithms? Right. Too? Well, in the group I worked with, um, I, at the lab I worked in the intelligence uh, and reconnaissance division where um, everybody else that I worked with was doing signal processing on um, satellite and, and radar data. And they were doing, um, out, they were developing algorithms for road finding. They were developing s coherent change detection algorithms to find paths that people walked on in the desert, you know, or, or any kind of uh, abnormalities in change data. So um, the thing that I picked up over the summer was that this is extremely, extremely hard, and the algorithms that are developed today are, are, don't exist. They, they are not good enough to do uh, tasks like this yet. So um, a big potential area for Mechanical Turk then would be a kind of supervised learning algorithm where we can get people to act as the learning algorithm as, um, to adapt it while uh, it's, it's, it's learning, I guess. So, um, you know, it, it, it's better off now to have um, people doing it, I guess, because uh, we don't have the technology available for the, the signal processing. Especially in, in, in image data, there's high noise, high density, so. Anyone else? Yeah. 
curious if you tried various prices to see if they produce better results or faster results? We, we tried a, um, a range of prices, um, and, and, and a lot of the research that I read came from MIT's uh, Computer Simulation Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. Um, and the research has shown that the more money you pay the users, the quicker the task gets done, but that doesn't necessarily